Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how my new solar PV system is working. So it's first full month of production in May 2024 and also some little issues that I'm having with the Give Energy batteries but hopefully are getting sorted out. Okay so thanks for taking the time to tune in to this video. So I'm going to give you an update on basically how my new solar PV system is working that I had installed right at the end of April, which is why I kind of waited till we have the full month of May performance. So I have 12 430 watt Jinko solar panels installed in a GSE in-roof system. So that gives me 5.16 kilowatts of uh, potential PV generation in optimal conditions. Uh, that then connects back to a five kilowatt give energy hybrid inverter and then that has connected to it two of their 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries in addition to that i also have a, a tesla powerwall and um, my energy eddy and zappy and harvey and all that sort of stuff some of that is kind of relevant um some not so much uh, for this video but we're going to go through how the system performed in the month I, i'm able to compare it to my kind of old pv system at the old house because solar edge have not made those stats publicly available anymore um but we'll look at kind of how things are supposed to be working what the payback's supposed to look like and where some of that energy has gone so first things first if we look at the reports that are available from uh, give energy's portal we can see that during the month of may we generated 548 0.39 kilowatt hours of electricity um, we're able to use 498.49 kilowatts and of that 328.70 kilowatts went into the battery to be used obviously when the sun's gone down we did export 49.90 kilowatt hours of energy back to the grid however at the time during may i wasn't signed up for the export so no income uh, from that in this month but moving forward in june i will get paid for export now i'm not actively trying to export at all i want to be self-consuming everything putting it into the batteries or heating hot water or charging the cars wherever it may be um, but i'm having a little bit of an issue with the batteries which we'll touch on in the moment which is causing me to have that export so in terms of the best month uh, the best day uh, during may it was actually sunday the 19th of June, where we generated 31.23 kilowatt hours. So that was the best day that we had uh, during the month. And the worst day was a measly 3.25 kilowatt hours of energy. So not great solar generation at all. In terms of how much the house used in terms of energy, we are quite a high energy household. Four of us living here, two of us working from home full time, two electric cars being charged up three batteries um obviously being having power going to them for storage um hot water electricity as well and we're slowly trying to move away from gas so we have uh, one room that's got air to air and obviously looking at getting more of that done in the future so we um consume as a household 1273.65 kilowatt hours of electricity the highest day that we had importing um, or the highest day of consumption, I should say, was on Friday the 3rd, where the house used 73.42 kilowatt hours. And our lowest day, which is somewhat uh, typical, was 19. That was on Thursday the 9th, and we used 19.30 kilowatt hours. In terms of battery, um, total amount of energy that went into the batteries there in terms of charging, 299.80 kilowatts um, uh, of energy. And the day that we used uh, or had the most put in there was on the 8th, so 17.68 kilowatt hours of energy. And the lowest update was on the 1st, only 3.8 kilowatts of energy, kilowatt hours of energy going in there. And you can see then also in terms of discharge, we've managed to get uh, 328.70 kilowatt hours of energy out of the batteries uh, in total for the month of May. In terms of grid import, um, you can see here we've imported 748.66 kilowatt hours of energy 
and the reason for that is again most of our charging happens off peak we try not to use anything from the grid during peak time so on octopus go uh, so you got seven and a half pence per kilowatt off peak versus i think 20 six twenty seven pence it is right now and on that note if you are looking to move energy provider and octopus energy could be the one for you please consider using my link in the description uh, if you do sign up to octopus energy both you and i both get 50 pounds credited to your bill um, so that kind of covers the overall kind of solar pv stats now in terms of payback the current estimate from the install is around six years in terms of the payback for the system so the five kilowatt inverter the two 9.5 kilowatt hour um, battery storage and the 12 panels i've got to be honest the weather's not been great uh, so far since getting the solar so i'm not sure if that six years may be a little bit optimistic we're seeing my last solar pv system paid for itself back in about just around five years I think it was but that was a, a better oversized system so performance was better on the, on the dull days but what I can say um, for this first month is like I mentioned we generated 548.39 kilowatt hours of energy we um, used 498.49 kilowatt hours of energy so that avoid us buying that from the grid so at peak rates that would be a saving of 131 pounds and 45 pence. And again, we did export 49.90 kilowatt hours, but right now we're not getting paid anything for export. So right now into our payback pot goes 131 pounds and 45 pence. So obviously we're gonna see how it goes in the first year and that will give us a rough estimation of what the payback is going to be like. Uh, another kind of point to note as well, obviously we mentioned that um, how much it was that went into the battery what was it it was 326.30 kilowatt hours of energy went into the battery but we also put a little bit of the surplus into electric cars um, so we put 12.01 um, kilowatt hours of energy into charging electric cars that's only not point well, actually only three percent of our charging was from solar the rest of it was from grid so 378 0.72 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid went into charging our cars um, and then for the water um, 48 kilowatt hours of um, energy from solar went into heating hot water um, I'm just trying to see if I have the data here yeah and then we had I think around 209.8 kilowatt hours in total in terms of electricity usage for heating the hot water. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, one of the issues we're having, which is causing the export, and actually very rarely are we able to get the batteries from giving energy up to 100%, whether that being charging from solar or from the grid, is it's hitting some weird kind of cap, basically, where it kind of, will only charge at 580 watts. So it starts off charging at like 3.6 kilowatts or where it is, um, but then it will drop to 580 watts at varying rates. It could be sometimes as high as like in the high 80s, but also had it like at 40% and it's kind of sat down charging very slowly. I I'll show up a couple of graphs where you can see where it just kind of plateaus on this line. Um, Give Energy have been great actually in terms of their customer support. They've been out once. They thought it might be some loose connections on the battery buzz bar, which I've sometimes seen cause that issues, which makes it look like there's a dodgy cell. Um, but that hasn't resolved the issue. Um, so actually coming out, I believe tomorrow, to replace one of the batteries and we'll see hopefully um, if that resolves the issue. Uh, I do have a Tesla Powerwall 2 as well, but at the moment that's not in use whilst we kind of see how the charging stuff works with give energy batteries just to make sure there's no kind of muddying the waters of any issues or anything so i'll let you know in the future update how that video or how that kind of issue kind of resolves itself but um until then you know i'm still happy with the system just a few bugs to iron out and i'm interested to see kind of how things work and i'll also talk about how i have things configured in terms of the Give Energy 
system working with my energy charging and stuff because obviously being a hybrid inverter um, you can't put uh, CT clamps on the battery like you can with a Tesla it's obviously hybrid so the other devices don't know if it's solar generation or battery coming through through that inverter so there's a little bit of tweaking to be done there so hope this video helped hope it was interesting if you have any questions please ask them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you uh, as always thanks very much for watching the channel and until the next video take care of yourself bye for now